Change your tone, Pierre, or not, given that your target remains uh, unchanged at 800? Well, Carl, you can't, you can't say I changed my tone. I think the stock changed its price very, very fast, but my tone remained exactly the same. So uh, we upgraded Tesla a few weeks back, $800 price target. Our idea is Tesla can do two to three million units uh, in 2026. Uh, and if you model that um, into the stock, it's probably worth $800 today. So I think at $800, uh, the stock reflects a company doing 2.5 million units uh, in, uh, in, 2000 and, uh, uh, in 2026. They could do better than that. They could do a bit less than that. And it's going to be difficult to get a catalyst, like a fundamental catalyst, giving you increased confidence on whether they can do better or not. Then the second uh, thing... You mentioned... Hmm? Yes, go ahead. You, you call out specifically a, a potential for a miss on gross margins in Q1 and the Y potentially disrupting the three in your view. How, how confident are you in that call? Yeah, so it's not a call, actually. It's like uh, what I did in that piece of research for, uh, for my client investors is to describe what could be the thing that could hurt the stock uh, from today's levels. And I listed four things. So the first one is the end of the short squeeze. As you know, the short interest in the name is very high. It's probably, it probably came down very significantly yesterday. It's coming down today again. It's a short squeeze. Uh, when you get out of this short squeeze, there is a risk that technically the stock pulls back. Then the, there are three other things that could hurt the stock. The first one is a miss on gross margin in Q1. I do think that when the uh, Shanghai factory ramps and when Model Y ramps, it's going to weigh two to three points on gross margins in Q1. And I don't see that in, uh, in, in expectations. I don't mind it because it's going to be a pullback in gross margin and then a very strong sequential trajectory on gross margins. But if the street doesn't anticipate that, potentially it can hurt the stock in the near term. And then the second thing I saw is the Model Y. So I think the Model Y is going to be extremely successful. I think the Model Y is going to be better margins than the Model 3. But I also see that today 20% of people who buy a Model 3 are actually trading in an SUV. And I think that crowd is going to move very fast to the Model Y when it's available. And I think Model 3 deliveries will continue to grow. But when Model Y takes off, it's going to be uh, disrupted. And that could create also uh, a reason for the stock to pull back. And then the last one is uh, the Gigafactory in Berlin. Uh, Tesla used that to a very high pace of building up new factories in China. I think in Germany, yeah. things will probably take a bit longer. How about the fact that in addition to being a car manufacturer, this is a company that has solar roofs, it's got power generation. Elon Musk has talked about, continues to talk about an insurance offering that's going to roll out. When do these factor into this name? And how important are they to a sustained bull thesis here? Yeah, it's a very good question. So all these upsides um, uh, that you listed, I think uh, I'm very uh, hopeful about them. So insurance business could add 30% to Tesla's profit. Uh, and then the autopilot, like having like a unique and highly differentiated autopilot feature, uh, could increase gross margins by five points and increase uh, uh, profitability by another 50%. Uh, and then last but not least, um, this, this word is still very uncertain, but Elon Musk thinks uh, ultimately uh, the power, the energy storage business of Tesla is going to be even larger than the car business. So these three things could add enormous value to what we see in Tesla today. But our view is that over the next year, we're not going to see anything really making us significantly more confident on this, uh, on this dimension. So these are things that are going to play out in more than a year from now. And that's the reason why at $800 today, we think the stock is relatively fairly valued. Pierre, this thing got to that $800 price target of yours and beyond this morning uh, pretty darn quickly. Uh, how high would it have to go for you to say it's too rich? Um, that's a good question, John, but, you know, uh, remember this $800 price target uh, is a one-year price target. And behind that, our 2025 price target is actually $1,400. So you have room before I think the stock is too rich, definitely. Pierre, you mentioned the, the short squeeze that's been playing out here. Another key factor uh, in terms of the activity and just the huge surge of volumes we've seen uh, per Mike Santoli is also retail investors buying in, you know, as you can see through Robinhood and some of the other data points. Is it 
good or is it bad that you have all these retail investors buying in when the stock chart has been so parabolic? Uh, it's a good question, and to be completely honest, I don't, uh, I don't really know. The only thing I can tell you is that I do not recommend them to buy the stock at that point in time. I recommend them yeah. to buy once the short squeeze is behind us and on the pullback of the stock. And, and, and whether retail investors are going to add volatility or not, or have an influence on valuation, to be completely honest, I don't know. Pierre, you were early in uh, remaining confident in their model. And I wonder, when you hear Ron Barron come on our air and talk about a trillion in revenue in 10 years, does that make sense to you? Uh, not really, because you have like a bull, um, a bull case, uh, uh, with, with all due respect to Ron, of course. Le, uh, le, within that vision, there is this idea that Tesla can become a ride-sharing operation. So Tesla can be the number one car manufacturer, and so the number one ride-sharing operation in the world. And so uh, that's a part of the story that I don't buy. I don't think Tesla uh, will ever be able to catch up uh, with Uber and other ride-sharing leaders, uh, very simply because once you have a ride-sharing leader in a market, it's nearly impossible to build an alternative. Uh, and, and on top of that, I don't think Tesla will have a technology and nobody will have a technology in the foreseeable future that allows cars to drive by themselves without supervision and was, without being part of an existing fleet. So I have a very unique view on that matter, which is that a lot of self-driving technology will become available over the next decade. But the only place where you're going to really be able to leverage them for ride sharing are existing ride sharing networks. And so that's on the last leg of this vision, uh, I would tend to disagree with the most bullish uh, comment commentators on Tesla. Okay.